All right, today we're gonna wire up the permaculture barn, but we're not using regular power. Beautiful day out. How many times do you ever get to wear a t-shirt in the middle of January? I don't know, but I'm gonna, I look at it as a blessing. Okay, I've been getting a bunch of questions um, over the past couple of months as far as electric fencing, you know, this sheep fencing or chicken fencing or whatever fencing you may have. And a lot of folks are confused about what systems to get, how to make it work. As it turns out, we have this permaculture barn over here. It doesn't have any power on it right now. And to keep it in what I think is accordance with permaculture, we're gonna keep it that way. So we're gonna use renewable means in which to power up not only this fence, but everything we need in that barn. Now it'll be a series of things that happens over a period of time because I'm only, you know, I'm bouncing all over the place. There's so much to do in one day. The way this fence is currently set up because there is no power in the barn right now is that we're using, let's say something similar to this. Now this is something just off the shelf that you can get at a tractor supply. Um, they have them, this one's a 25 mile, I think it's, um, one joule output, which really isn't all that much, at least not for my application, but it may be sufficient for yours. I tend to want to get something a little more powerful, but what we have going on right now is that up at the house to my, to my right is we have one of these on the wall and you can just plug it in. This is an AC charger. You see that? You just plug it into your outlet and this, your green, it goes to a ground rod and this part goes to your hot fence. Well, the problem with that, the way we see it is, number one, I got a I got a number 12 wire that isn't even rated for this. This is just number 12 wire that we would use on a construction site or any other place in, in the construction electrical application. And it's basically running from all the way up at the house, all the way down here. Now, I know what the capability of this stuff is and the insulation, frankly, isn't rated for the kind of voltage that's coming out of this stuff. Or if you're stepping on it, it's in the sunlight, it's not rated for that either. So that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a long-term fix, but it has been sufficient for us when we were running the pigs all through here, it, it works, but it's not sustainable and it, it's, gonna, it's gonna wear out on you. In time, no matter where you use that, that insulation is gonna give way. The idea is, is today I'm gonna start the very beginnings of taking this permaculture barn completely off grid. And just so you know, Every structure we put up from here on out on this property will be completely off grid. And then we're gonna slowly get the house to that position as well. We're gonna take it, remember folks, all this stuff is not a war you win in miles, you win it in inches. So you take one portion off, you get it off grid and it works and it's sufficient. Then you drive on and you take another. Now let's talk about the charger we're gonna to use today. And this one here, generally it's pretty inexpensive but the one i prefer to use and the ones i've used before are almost always manufactured in either australia or new zealand this one here is manufactured in new zealand it has three jewels considerably more powerful than this but it's considerably more expensive and folks i will say that once again if you go to your local farm store which i did for this particular model they just happen to have it on the shelf you're gonna find out, at least in my case, that this was maybe 15% cheaper buying it locally than even going through some affiliate online. So what it gives me, this is an AC or DC charger. This one is strictly AC, meaning you gotta plug it in to your power at the house. Now, it comes with this, which is a little, you know, I can plug it, plug it into the wall and also plug it into the charger, or it has the application that we're gonna to use today and that is DC or direct current. Now, I'm not, I'm gonna, even though I'm a journeyman electrician, I'm gonna try to explain this stuff in a way a doctor tries to explain a diagnosis where he doesn't use, if you have an intelligent doctor, maybe he's not using all the technical terms, but he breaks it down in the way that an everyday layman can do. So that's, that's exactly what I'm gonna try to do today. So right now we're gonna go with a DC or direct current. Now the difference being, I'm breaking it down in the most fundamental way, just look at direct current as a battery. Look at alternating current or AC 
as the stuff in your house. So really to make this thing operate, I just take my leads here, the black, which is always negative, and the red, which is always positive, stick them onto a battery, take this black, this portion here, run it to a ground rod, and take this part and run it to my fence. Okay, I know a lot of people out there haven't done this sort of thing, so I'm gonna walk you through, and then we're gonna add some other applications to it. We're gonna walk you through right over here in the barn where I'm gonna mount this thing and explain to you what we're gonna do in this permaculture barn, and I'm gonna show you how to do it also. So we'll take off, we'll show you every single step of the way on this thing. Here we are in this one little stall within the barn. And I already know there's a bigger picture to all this. So the only thing first, if you're gonna do this, is I'm gonna hang this up. Now remember, this is gonna be a DC application or direct current. Now I'm putting it kind of high, at least for me, I'm putting it kind of high because I wanna be able to see it from the house. Because this thing also has, when it's pulsing, it has a light here that lets you know. And believe me, in low light at night, you're gonna wish you had it. Got it a little bit too deep, so let me back it off this tiny bit. And then, has a little place on the back of it where it could just sit on a nail. Has other applications too, in which you can mount it. But this is more than sufficient. So with that said, these two leads, they're gonna to go to my battery. This is basically what's charging the fence. So we got black, remember that's negative, red is always positive. Okay, here's our battery. Now let's talk about what type of battery it is. Now when you have a solar kit, it doesn't necessarily have to be this kind of battery. Um, you're better served if you have a deep cycle um, battery, one in which the difference between that and your car battery is that this can, be discharged quite a bit and then recharge, discharge. Di you can go on and you can do that numerous times. Your car battery isn't built that, isn't built for that. Although you can do it with a car battery, I've done it before. And so all I'm gonna do, now these leads clearly aren't gonna be long enough to fit this thing. Well, I don't like sitting these batteries on the ground and I can provide you a number of reasons why that's not the best thing to do. So I'm gonna basically take some little makeshift platform and I'm gonna stick it right here. All right, so a little makeshift platform, nothing fancy, nothing fancy. And there's a reason I have it at this elevation. Um, stick my handy dandy battery up there. Now I can look on here on your battery, it'll have a, a negative sign and a positive sign. So I'm just gonna do a quick test. And if I'm right, if this thing's working functionally, now I don't know what the output voltage is yet. I just want to make sure it's working right, okay? So red goes to positive, black goes to negative. I'm just going to take it, stick it on this battery. Let's see what happens. So this thing is off and running. All right, the next stage of this requires nothing more than a ground rod and this bottle of water. Some of you may have seen me do it in previous videos before. Now. Most people are gonna think that they gotta take a hammer and drive this thing in. And if it were at your residence or any other place, commercial, industrial settings, in no way would I recommend this. Now, little disclaimer, because I know we live in a highly litigious society, and so I'm just kinda of covering my butt a little bit. Do not do this in any other application. Now, let me go back and put it, whether it's this manufacturer or any other, they're gonna recommend that you make a ground field what we electricians call it ground field. And it's gonna be a series of rods and then you're gonna have wire connected in between them. Now, the way I would do it would be to exothermically weld this, something we called CAD weld. We would do that from one rod to the next. That is not necessary in 99% of the applications. Now, we did live in a place in Texas where the ground was so dry and the rain was so infrequent that you do have to do that. Without saying too much more, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So this is a six foot rod. I'm just gonna make a little divot in the ground. And I'm gonna take my water and I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. There's no way to do this without me getting a little bit dirty. So I kind of make a little hole there, went down maybe four inches or so, and then I'm just gonna put some water in there. And now I don't have to drive it all the way. Now remember, this is a six foot rod. All I'm gonna do, go a little bit further every single time. A little bit of water in there, huh? Okay. That six foot rod is about to my head as I'm kneeling. Taking it out, I'm gonna add a little bit more water. 
old electrician's trick here, but I'm not allowed to tell you that. Okay? A little bit more. Almost no effort at all. Look at that rod. Six foot, nearly buried. I could leave it right there if I wanted. And sometimes I do, depending on what app application we're doing. I'm leaving it here. You know what, just to show you, I'll go ahead and drive it a little bit further. There you go. Now, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more. Now, if you hit some rocks, if you hit small pebbles and stuff, it'll drive right past it. But I mean, it's not, you can't have the stone of ball back down there and think you're gonna get through it with this. So sometimes you may have to do something else. So I got it down that low. There we go, six foot rod, no effort. There it is in the ground. Now, this ground rod is going to connect to, this is all this thing has to do. I'm gonna connect it to the negative side of my charger. I don't have to use this. I could use bare wire if I wanted to. I could even use the, um, the 14 gauge wire I'm gonna stick out in the field, but I just happen to have this number 12 THHN wire sitting right here. So all I'm gonna do is attach it, nothing fancy. I'll go ahead and strip this stuff a little bit, and I'm not even caring if it's not all that dressed up. But I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm gonna pull it out, but I'm gonna leave the insulation on the wire, this end of it. Now, see that? I got this little Got that little gap in there. In fact, I could even take it a little bit more. Okay, so now here we are on my negative terminal. And all I'm gonna do is screw it down. Now, the only reason I did that, and you don't have to, is that just so there's no bare copper sticking out of there. Now, I would, in a perfect world, I would go ahead and I'll come back and do it later. I just don't have any staples with me right now. All I'm gonna do is go down, I'm gonna take this little clamp. I've got my clamp that's gonna go in here like so. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm doing this with the expectation that I'm gonna come back and staple it. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of slack in there. It's okay if it's a little long. So take my handy dandy strippers, cut it, and I'm gonna do the same thing all over again. It would work better if I had solid wire, which I don't have right now, but some of this leftover yellow from the previous stuff we've done, it'll do just fine. I'm just gonna take it, I wanna back that off just a little bit so I can get my wire in there. Or you can come underneath, you can do that and fold it over. I mean, whatever you think works for you, I'm gonna come down just a little bit and I'm gonna tighten that up. Now I'm gonna take my channel locks, that's what I happen to have on me. I could even use, I'm, usually I'm using my Leatherman. Now in regular electric work, I'd never do it this way, but this isn't all that critical. Okay, so that's tight, okay? So now I got plenty of slack in here to where when I go to staple this back, bam, we're ready to rock and roll. All I have to do is take a piece of wire from here to whatever to whatever fence I wanna make hot. It could be electronet for the sheep, pigs, chickens, cows, a wire, poly wire, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the only thing left to do, I got my my, my ground wire going to the ground. Like I said, I'll dress that up. The electrician and me can't bear to leave that thing dangle like that. So to make this thing hot, all I need to do is connect it like so, and it's blinking. Now, I'm not gonna touch this just now <laughs> because I don't wanna get Kentucky fried, but here's where the application in this place is gonna be different. Now, for you people at home that are looking to do this, the ones that have asked the questions, all you have to do is take a wire, make sure it's not touching any metal or touching the ground, get it from here to your fence, your poly tape, your poly wire, whatever the case, whatever you're using, that's it, that's a wrap, okay? But this permaculture barn is a little bit different for the application that I'm doing today. What's gonna happen, at least here, is I'm gonna come off of this with some number 14 gauge fence wire, elect electric wire. I'm gonna come off of this, I'm gonna put it on insulators, and I'm gonna dress it around the barn. All right, folks, now that you got everything in, you know, installed, you get the basic concept of how it basically goes together. This goes to the ground rod, this part will eventually go out to the field to your fence. 
So now the critical question is to ask, now what do I do now that I have it in place? Um, sooner or later, this battery is going to discharge itself and you're going to be in a need to do something. We got you got several choices, but I'm going to give you two. You can have another battery inside your house or wherever, in a barn, wherever you have AC power, and you can have a trickle charger firing up the next battery, the next deep cell battery, or whatever battery. You could have that and then just rotate them. I it, it typically takes, depending on the battery, depending on the load, depending on a lot of things, anywhere between five to seven. I've gotten as far as, I think, 12 days on one charge in a battery. So do you really want to be lugging this thing back and forth? Or you could have this thing trickle charged by solar. Now, in this particular case, I got a little cheap seven watt. All this stuff is super cheap and I got it all at Harbor Freight. Typically what you're gonna think is, okay, we just take the solar panel, put it right to the battery. I won't go through all the reasons why you should never do that. Um, not the least of which being that if you do that, if you take your solar panel and you put them directly to a battery, I'm probably speaking to a number of people out there. After a few days, you probably realize your battery not only is drained, but it's destroyed. And the reason why, if you wire those things directly and you don't have a diode in line there, it's going to drain the other way at night. I won't go through and lose everybody in the woods on how that happens and how electrons work. Just know that you should not ever wire your solar panel directly to the battery. You should use something, and I think this thing was 20 bucks, and this is the cheapest version of it. And like I said, you want to make absolutely sure that if you buy one particular brand when it comes to solar accessories, that you stick with that brand. Because I promise you, the connectors in a lot of these things, it's not like a receptacle in your house, where just about every manufacturer is gonna make them the same way, or your light switch in your house. They're all going to be generally made pretty much the same way where they're interchangeable. It doesn't work that way with this stuff and also with a number of other electrical components. So if you stick with it, if you get a brand, stick with it. Now, on a house, would I use this stuff? No. I'm using this stuff because it's inexpensive and frankly, I just want to see what this less expensive stuff, what its shelf life is because it's really not much of an investment um, I think this was 20 bucks. This might have been 10 and I think the solar panel was 17 So you're really not in for all that much now. The reason why this is critical is That okay number one. This is like a hundred watts. That's really not much imagine a hundred light bulb uh, Light bulb that's the output on it, but it really doesn't require much right now So we're gonna go with this one and as we expand and do other things within this barn and folks You're gonna want to stick around for that this thing will be replaced with something else I have that's good for 500 watts. And we'll just see, right now this is more of a beta test to see how well this thing works. If not, if this whole rig goes down, I'll let you know about it and I'll show you what I replaced it with. But the cool thing about this is that it's all plug and play. When I say plug and play, it means it's, it's dummy proof. You can't, you can't install this stuff the wrong way. So here, it even has a little thing on here, what goes where. This will connect to your battery. The middle one connects to your solar panel. And this far one, it's kind of a cool thing they have in there, is that if you want to add lights, which we are, you can also use that. I'll get into that in later detail later. But this is critical, or at least having a diode somewhere in there. But this is all handled right here. It even gives you a status of what's going on. So this is going to mount somewhere on the wall in here. This has all these little accessories you can use in here. It's probably not even needed. I think everything I need was in the kit for the actual solar panel. But now, I've taken this thing and I mounted it to a piece of plywood. And I've stood it off with a couple of washers in behind there. I stood it off to allow this little wire come through. So what's going to happen? We're hooked up right next to the greenhouse. And... I'm essentially, because the angle on the roof of that greenhouse is perfect. It's exactly what we need. This thing is essentially going to be mounted up there in a corner that's really not doing much, much else. We'll get this up there. And then from there, I'll show you how it all ties together. It is absolutely easy doing it this way. Folks, it's really this easy. So my solar panel, 
is up on the top of the greenhouse. Ideal angle. It's over there doing what solar panels do right now. So, like I said, here we got the load. When it says load, in the electric world, we call things line and load. All you need to know right now is that if you have a DC load, let's say like lights you're going to have, these are going to go to those or anything else you have DC that's within the capacity of this thing. But what's important to know right now is that we have this little jumper here and it came in the pack with the solar panel. It wasn't really meant for this, but that's what I'm going to use it for. Now, the part that says the battery, like I said, plug and play. You cannot mess this up. It goes in there like so. Bam. It's ready to rock and roll. So all I'm going to do to get completely up and running, we're going to put one side here on a positive. Okay, that just slipped off of there. It's not necessary, but we'll put it on there. And then the other side to the negative, all from this solar charge regulator. And now from here, it even says solar. They made it to where anybody could do this. And folks, there's another little critical uh, trade secret I'm going to show you in here. It doesn't seem like much, but it really is when I explain it. Okay, so here we are. It says right there, charging. You can see that little amber light that's letting you know what the status of it is. Now, I'll put a meter on it. I'll put a meter on it and straighten that out. Now, folks, there's one other critical thing when you do something like this and with any electrical component. So the solar panel is on the outside and clearly this little wire is going through. It penetrates through the barn and then down to us. You never want your electrical components looking like this. You never want you want a little bit of a loop in there. In fact, we call it a drip loop. I'll take a tie wrap or something and I'll loop this thing right there and I'll hold it. And the reason being is that water will track down this. It will track to it. And if you don't have a loop here, that little loop, whatever moisture it collects, is going to just catch at that loop. It's not going to obviously go back uphill and get into your electrical component. But if you had it like so and you had it tight, it's going to run right down there into your electrical component. So any do it yourselfers, you know, you're going to want to know that. So like I said, don't forget your drip loop when you make any penetration from the outside to the inside. Now, everything's off and running. I'll put my meter on this and see how hot it is, but I guarantee that's pushing out some uh, 12 volts right now. Now, to get everything off and running, and the only thing left to do, besides the other things I need to do, is to take the portion that's coming from your energizer and putting it onto your battery. So I'm gonna, we got a couple of posts there. I could, these things are a little slippery the way they got them here. So bam, got one there and one there. And if you look, everything's hopping and popping this thing's charging and the cool thing about this thing it even tells you when you have low voltage or high voltage it, it, it gives you everything and it was a 20 dollars component so it's pretty darn worth it so there you have it folks everything is off and running when i want to come in and turn it down turn it off when i come down here all i need to do just take one post off and bam i can go do whatever work i need to do if i need to get into the fence or deal with it and then to get it fired back up, I can just put it back on. And you know, I can even make this even simpler. I'm trying to keep it very basic though. There's a, there's a method in all the madness. Now I could put a knife switch out in the field where I could turn this on and off without having to come in here, but I need to come down here anyway. So everything is off and running. The solar charger is charging. I'll put a meter on it, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to. And this battery's doing its thing. So all day, it's ready to rock and roll. Now, this is done. It's time for me to get, and it's time for me at this point, you could do all this stuff or whatever application you need. Now, mine is different. And this is what's, this is yet another component, another aspect of what we're doing here at the Permaculture Barn. I'm gonna come off of here and I'm gonna do something pretty cool and special and probably never done before, but it's easy and it's simple. Stay tuned. All right, 
So what we have here is our hot wire that's attached to the bar, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Now the only thing left to do is to attach it to my hot there. Just tighten that up like so. Could come out the bottom. This one's designed to go pretty much any way you want it. And just for GP, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this off. It's not even necessary. Now, it seems like a haphazard mess. I'll dress this up later. I'm just trying to show you something here. I'm trying to make a bigger point. Okay. Everything's good. The only thing left to do is every time I put this on here, that fence is hot. Every time I take it off, it's not. So let's walk on the outside. Let me show you what we got here. All right, so it's coming off that charger, and it's hitting all these insulators on the outside of the barn. And the only real danger at this point, and I'll know soon enough, is whether or not it's grounding out to one of the nails, the many nails that are in this barn. This thing is keeping it off. I could have gotten something that was better than this that keeps it a little further away from the surface, but these were on special and I couldn't pass it up. And so they weren't exactly perfect for this. They're suitable. So there's 25 in a bag and bam, I was able to get that for half price. So what do we got? We got basically a hot wire that goes up, goes all the way around the barn. And let's talk about the reasons why. So what we have basically coming up from the house is this number 12 THHN. This is how we've been powering this thing the whole time. Now, with the new system we have, which is, this was running on AC power, this one's running on DC and solar, and the only thing left to do is give it a test drive. Now, this hot wire basically makes its way all the, round, all the way around the barn. Everywhere you have a chute gate, which right now there are four of them, Everywhere you have a chute gate, this thing is going right above it. And it's at a level to where all I need to do to make this thing hot, no matter where it is, there's no stretching out any wires, it's just hook this directly onto it. Now, no matter where the animals are located, no matter where I need a fence to be, it's now tethered to the main trunk line that's always hot if I want it to be. Now, the only thing left to do is turn it on and check the voltage here and let's see what we got. All right, so here we go. We got a handy dandy digital testers. There are worse ones out there and there are better ones. Now I'm gonna take my handy dandy tester. Now, it's not just this poultry net that's on here right now. I haven't tested this yet. We got the poultry net and over there in a place you can't see, we have another one set up. So essentially two poultry nets set up here. Let's see what we got on this thing. You got 10,000 volts on this fence right now. Now you wanna also be careful because when you got a voltage that high, I touched, I touched this stuff the other day going down there and it rattled my teeth. Point being in all this is now the permaculture barn is one massive step closer to being completely off grid. Now with that same battery, I'm gonna show you some really, really cool things in terms of what else do we need in a barn? We need lights, right? We gotta have that. We also have a 550 gallon tank out there right now full of water. We need to be, we need to have a way to move it everywhere it needs to go. So that's also gonna happen. But right now, the first thing out of the gates that needed to happen, now this, this eyesore that I can't stand that's coming all the way from the house that we walk on, that we drive on, that people trip over, all that goes away now. And this whole project, not counting the time it took to film it, took 45 minutes at the most so it's really not that hard folks if you got any questions which almost certainly there will be some out there regarding fencing or any of this stuff by all means leave them down below so i hope this stuff was helpful and folks remember subscribe hit the like button and bell tell all your friends about us all that good stuff so until next time this is billy the permaculture pimp daddy where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion We'll see you next time.